How's it going guys? Welcome to this painting tutorial. This time, because you asked for it, I decided to paint a Tempestus Cyan for the Militarum Tempestus faction on Warhammer 40k. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe. Share this video with your friends, if you can. That really helps me out. So I'm going to start by priming the miniature. I'm using Rustolium Automotive Primer. You can use any primer that you like. I would recommend white primer or gray primer. And I'm going to start to paint sandry dust on the pants and all of the under uniform under the armor. And uh, I'm doing this because I like to paint from the inside out. The deepest layers of detail are painted first so that you can paint the others over them without much problem. Next I'm going to use the fan and this I'm going to use it on all of the armor. Remember to thin down your paints. I'm using a mixture of one to one with water and paint and that's usually a little bit too much maybe and uh, just add a little bit of water don't use paint straight from the pot and start base coating all of the places that you like to paint. I'm using uh, monster brush from Army Painter that is a very nice brush for base coating. Here I paint, I'm painting the the case of the weapon with Incubi Darkness. Now here for a quick tip, when I'm using metallics I recently like to use this Liquitex slow dry. Uh, it really helps the paint metallic paint flow and be workable for a longer time. What I find that happens with metallic paints from the Citadel range and many other ranges as well is that they uh, become tacky very fast especially if you live in a very hot place so if you use a little bit of this stuff you can work a lot more with your metallic paints next I'm going to use uh, Vallejo model color black and this is because I just like this the matte finish of this color a lot more and I'm just painting the boots and the details that you want to be black. You can find the Liquitex slow dry on art stores and uh, you can use it on edge highlighting as well. Next with Skaven Blight Dinch I'm going to paint the front guards of the boots and also all of the strapping around the model. If you don't have the monster brush, you can use a size 2 brush, I would recommend a Kalinsky one, or you can use the large brush from Citadel. As long as it, you can form the tip with the brush, a large brush is good for painting any sort of detail. Next with Balthazar Gold, and water down a little bit with the slow dry, I'm going to start painting all of the gold details at the end. For this step I'm using a detail brush. I think it's not very necessary to use a detail brush, you could use the standard brush, but I didn't find mine, so most of the other steps from here on are painted with this brush. Although it has a very small surface area and doesn't hold a lot of paint, I wouldn't recommend this brush, but you can do it, it'll take a little bit more time, but it's fine, because if you take a little bit more time, you will have less errors. Next, I'm going to paint the eyes with Warp Stone Glow. And this is the detail brush. This is a good brush for the lenses and stuff like that because it's very fine detail. After that, I'm going to shade the model with Surf and Sepia. And this is going to go over the whole model, just leaving alone the gun and silver details if you can. To shade, just use a large brush and mop the color onto the whole miniature, leaving it sink into the recesses and shade. Next, with Nuln Oil, I'm going to shade the gun and all of the silver details. So after it dries, it looks like this. You can leave it like that if you're going for a, low, for a low standard but I'm going to highlight the pants with Shafti Bone 
uh, be sure to water down this color because it tends to go it tends to leave the paint strokes and looks a little bit streaky so if you have it watered down maybe you will have to apply two or three layers for the opacity to really pop but you won't have any sort of paint strokes or texture on the model next with Screaming Skull I'm going to give a second highlight to the pants and the uniform this try to concentrate it on the places that are di directly exposed to light the edges and places that you can see from above and the places that are popping out from the folds of the uniform and stuff like that just try to paint the upper parts leave the uh, the under parts as shadows with the previous color next we Thunderhawk blue this color I'm going to use to clean up the whole armor just leave the places that are touching the shadows and the gold on the armor on the previous color and with this color start cleaning up the whole miniature here I'm using the detail brush and it's a good idea to use it to paint around the helmet where it's very easy to paint the other details that we already painted but for the rest of the model uh, base coat brush should be fine or a standard brush next with rust gray this color is going to be used to paint the freehand uh, stripe that runs along the arm so for this I'm using a detail brush and just pulling the brush downwards to make a straight line and uh, that's pretty much it just try to follow the shape of the arm paint a straight line as best as you can also that color was used to paint the mask but we're going to move on and paint Fenrisian Grey onto all of the edges of the armor uh, you can use the slow dry from Liquitex that I used on the metallics to thin down this paint and uh, that will make it flow a lot more easier and uh, the paint will stay uh, wet on the tip of your brush a little bit longer which will help to edge highlight the model try to use the edge of the brush as much as, as you can but if you can you can just try to freehand the edges uh, without going out of the of the edge if you do you can use the previous color to clean up it's not very difficult now that that's done I'm going to use cabalite green sorry about the warp stone glow there maybe you could use it on the step because it's a kind of similar color but it's actually cabalite green the color that I'm using to edge highlight the gun just the gun case the part the places that are green and uh, it's the same technique as edge highlighting the armor. Next, with Cyberate Green, or Cyberate Green, I'm edge highlighting the same places. Just try to make a final line, or just paint the sharpest edges, and that's it. Next, with Eshin Gray. This color is going to be used to paint the edges of the black parts. Uh, just, it's not too different from black. It doesn't look so. Uh, it doesn't pop a lot. But try to use it on all of the edges and raised parts on the boots, on the straps. Well, not the straps, the uh, power cords that go to the gun, and stuff like that. And then with downstone, I'm going to paint a finer line on the edges of the black maybe you can see there that I did a little bit big line on the lens and the scope but try to do fine lines and little details here and there where you see the light that pops from the black parts to make a highlight next with Storberm Storberming Fur this color is going to be used as a highlight for all of the 
gray gray brown parts on the strappings on the guards of the boots and stuff like that next I'm going to use iron breaker with this color I'm going to highlight all of the silver parts again remember that you can use the Liquitex low dry it's a very good product for using with metallics and to highlight the gold I'm going to use Gehenna's gold remember you can thin it down with the slow dry and uh, just apply it all over the uh, gold parts leaving recesses and darkest shadows with the previous color but mostly you're trying to paint most of the gold areas again just leaving the uh, the shadows and next auric armor gold I wanted to go for a very bright yellow gold on the details instead of a kind of silvery gold you could just add a little bit of silver to this auric armor gold and use this as a third highlight or second highlight and the gold won't look as yellow but for this model I kinda wanted to make it look like true gold next with uh, mood green I'm just touching the lenses and the scope and stuff like that and that's pretty much all of the steps for this tutorial so here's the end result I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed painting this model it was a very fun model to paint uh, it has a lot of details but not as other miniatures where there's so much detail that it's just kinda boring this miniature was very entertaining to paint I really felt that I was having a lot of fun if you like this video please like it comment and subscribe that really helps my channel a lot it helps the channel grow and with it to for me to make more videos more tutorials and more stuff feel free to leave a comment to let me know what you'd like to see next follow me on Facebook if you'd like there you can talk to me if you want and thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you on the next video.